on Bulletin Board this week. From GYD24 memories and mental health talks to home-based care training and a special feature at Bontiaville SDA Church. Another big question with a new reporter. To five-a-side soccer and netball tournaments, you're watching Bulletin Board. We had loads of fun in our short time showing up in the cities for Global Youth Day in Paul last week. You try saying that without taking a single breath. But it is our Adventist youth who had the best time. We couldn't resist a last look at how our youth showed up in the cities for Global Youth Day. The Plumstead SDA Church hosted a mental health talk this past weekend. Dr. Stella Mokitimi spoke on anxiety, depression and stress. Very appropriate topic in today's world, I think. If you were there, let us know how it went. And just yesterday, the Women's Ministries Department of the Cales River SDA Church started a home-based care training course. The course is free of charge and runs for eight Sundays, facilitated by Sister Judy Borchers. What an amazing opportunity! If you're on the course, let us know how it's going. For this week's bulletin board feature, this past week a number of churches had their Adventist Youth Week of Prayer. Bulletin board was at Bontierville Seventh-day Adventist Church, for the final day of their AY week of prayer, take a look.
There were so many people to speak to, but we managed to grab one or two youth leaders at Bontiable for a quick chat. We're here at Bonteville Seventh-day Adventist Church and I had the pleasure of worshipping here today. It was awesome. And in the process, we grabbed Anushka. I just want to say to you something before I will even let her speak. Her dad, her brother, everybody's involved here at church in her family. That's really awesome, isn't it? Anushka, thank you for agreeing to speak to us. Thank you for having me. So why don't you start with telling everybody a bit about yourself. So I'm 26. I am doing my final year in Masters in Biotech. So um, I'm also the Assistant Youth Leader. So yeah, I keep busy. <laughs> I'm very busy. I see that you keep busy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So what is it like juggling your church work and your studies? Um, it has been very difficult in the beginning to juggle. But I've had to put down boundaries that on Friday evening, from Friday evening to Saturday evening, I will not touch work. And God has blessed me that I felt that this journey, even though it's been long, has been blessed. God has carried me through things. So prioritizing God has never failed me. Wow. That in itself is a testimony. Prioritizing God has never failed Anushka. So you said you're the assistant youth leader, right? Um, tell me a bit about Bontieville's Youth club, you call it a youth club, not an Adventist youth whatever. Why? We call it a youth club because Bonteville has it very deep roots. Everybody is like a family. Or we've known each other our whole lives. And even though we are split, you know, ambassadors and young adults, because we are so close, it kind of overflows and it just feels more like a club. We, we feel that love, that, that love between us. Okay, so putting together this week of prayer, it must have taken a lot of work. What was it like? It was definitely a lot of work, um, but I want to thank God because we've had so many great youth leaders. Um, we've, we've made groups and each group had a leader and that leader really helped out in getting things going because we did both virtual and in-person nights and we had guest speakers and we are so thankful that God has used um, our various speakers, our various group leaders. They have been fantastic in bringing the message across. Wow, this has been a special week at Bontierville. What was your youth week of prayer like? Anushka, before we let you go, if it was something that you could say to a young person who isn't coming to church or has no interest, but they used to be here, what would you say? You will always have a place with God. It's never too late. The door is always open. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you've strayed, you will always have a home. That's really beautiful. Thank you so much for spending this short time with us. We really, we really loved getting to know you better. I loved seeing you in your environment. She's on the song service team also. She didn't say that, or did she? she well, I'm saying it now. She's on the song service team too. <laughs> Anushka, all the best with how you are praising God, ministering in your church, bringing people to Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I feel very privileged today because I managed to grab one of the speakers in today's final day of the Youth Week of Prayer at Bonteville Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mouthful, but Jermaine Jeffter. I, I like know you, you, you were shocked earlier when I said I know you since you were born, but like yeah. I know your parents, man, I'm that age now. We are kind of know the people's parents, but in <laughs> but Jermaine, it's so awesome to speak to you. Won't you just tell our viewers something a, a bit about yourself? Uh, well, so, okay. So my name is Jermaine. Uh, Jermaine Drafter. Uh, I am actually the tech um, technician for Bonteville State Church. Um, I'm part of the youth department, and yeah, today today was a new experience for me. Um, I was very I was very nervous. But when you when I got to the sacred desk, I just felt like the Holy Spirit was there. It was was with me, and all of a sudden the nerves went away. And um, yeah, I could really feel the support, not just from the people around me, but uh, God's support on my side as well. 
Beautiful. You somehow went straight there to what it was like being behind the sacred desk. I like that. You know, I as I was sitting and watching you and I was thinking, wow, these kids grow up. And I couldn't turn around to look at your parents, man, because I love looking at how proud they are. And I know they are because I spoke to your mom <laughs> a little earlier. So tell me something. What is it like as a young person in a church where you've grown up to find yourself preaching to the very same people that have seen you in nappies? Um, I think I have a big respect for the leaders of the church. Um, these are people that, as you said, I grew up here. These are people that I, I listened to every week and I idolized all of them. So uh, it was um, very important for me to take, take lessons and to um, use them as an example for me to live my life. So um, it was a very nice experience to be able to share my um, view or my message today with them and I hope that um, it was much appreciated uh, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. Awesome, awesome. And yes, it was appreciated. You don't have to hope. I can confirm it was appreciated by at least one person. <laughs> um, and then something else that I found interesting about your ministry here at church, Jermaine, um, you were preaching, um, you were part of, of, obviously, of something that was prepared, you know. But I also noticed that you work in the tech space at church. And I wanted to ask you, what's your experience been like working? Look, preaching is very front and center, no? Um, working in tech is like almost like a forgotten, like thankless job. You only get shouted at and people only look at you when something goes wrong. What's it been like for you in church? Um, so for me, it's... It's been quite an interesting um, experience. Um, when I first got baptized and I showed my, my, my passion to want to do the, the job, um, there wasn't much objections. The, the, the church was very supportive of me wanting to volunteer. And in my experience doing uh, my job, um, I noticed that, um, to your point, you said that doing tech is a very, you know, a job that nobody really sees. Um, but I think that all it's all to the glory of God. And um, it doesn't matter which, if you're in front or if you, you know, behind the scenes, we all are using our skills and our, sometimes our resources to help um, better the service and the glorification of God. So for me, um, to be at the back there, I'm very comfortable being at the back. Um, you, said, you said that, um, what's, what was it like being on, on, on a different uh, side of, of the mic, as you will, um, I'm, I'm going to keep it short, Lisa, and say that I give preachers a lot of respect. Um, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of um, commitment and, you know, effort to, to, to put yourself out there, encourage to put yourself out there. Um, so definitely, I was definitely changed by the experience. And I just hope to continue to grow in the Church of God. Wow changed by the experience i mean that sounds like church to me you know when you leave you're not the same <laughs> thank you so much jermaine for just uh, allowing me to steal a few minutes of your time for us to just share with so many people out there how you can get involved in your church as a young person you do you do not have to present qualifications god qualifies you if you are willing so um if there's one thing just one thing that you could tell a young person that they can do today to start strengthening their relationship with Jesus, what would that one thing be? I think for you as a youth, I think you need to figure out what it is that you are good at and run with it and just trust in yourself and in God and everything will fall in the way that it should and you will be strengthened beautiful thank you so much Jermaine we loved having this opportunity to chat to you thank you for having me we love getting to speak with you at your local churches let us know when we can come your way just use the email on the screen and because we like changing things up here on Bulletin Board, we have a second reporter roaming around Cape Town asking the big question. Meet Megan Lowe, a beautiful young lady with a heart for God and a question 
for you. Hi, welcome to The Big Question. My name is Megan and I'm joined by... Anashi. Hi Anashi, how are you? I'm good in you. I'm good, thanks. I have one very big question for you. The question is, what time do you get to church on a Sabbath morning? Um, nine o'clock. Why do you get to church on a, at nine o'clock? Because um, church starts is half past eight and then I know for a fact that the early blessings are always early. So you need to get the blessings before like everyone else. So that's why I'm always early. Wow, what a beautiful answer. I encourage everyone to get to church at at least nine o'clock in the morning. Let's try our best, eh? Thank you so much for answering that question. May you have a blessed day. Please join us again next time for the big question. The early worm catches the blessing, according to Anashe. Thank you, Megan. Apparently, Njabs has asked for another week off, so makes his back next week, everyone, with another big question. What could be more exciting than a five-a-side soccer tournament? Well, let's add to it a netball tourney as well. And we've got a day filled with all sorts of fun. This is a fundraising initiative from Sikokele Youth. Sunday, the 7th of April, 2024, from 0800 to 1400 at the Belleville Sports Ground. But you have to commit, no? It's 30 Rand per player. And there's a maximum quota of two reserves per team. I was once a reservist in netball. And then I was a wing attack. And then a shooter. And then a reservist again. Broad experience in netball. Please start registering for the Adventist Men's Congress at Hartenbos. I mean, we've been joking about a men's congress or a men's conference on the socials for a number of years. Well, this is actually it. The closing date to register is 1 April 2024. And that, my friend, is no April Fool's joke. And then, how's your planning coming along for the Senior Youth Congress from 14 to 17 June in Namibia and the Ambassador Mission Trip and Congress from 1 to 7 July in an as yet undisclosed location? But we're going. Also, let's remember to keep these events, the planning of these events in particular, in our prayers. But hang on, let's just catch up quickly. Are you a couple yet? Remember, these things require planning, so you're getting a reminder today here on Bulletin Board. The couple's retreat is from 30 August to 1 September. The cost is 5,800 per couple, covering all costs except transport. And the best part is, if you don't have an idea of where to begin, begin with 500 Rand. 500 Rand is a great start to many things. A non-refundable deposit of 500 Rand will secure your booking. So, if you take the remaining 5,300 Rand and divide it among the months left until August, then you're good to go. Oh no, I'm not doing your math for you. Your phone has a calculator. Open my eyes that I may see. In news from our channel, season three of Him Along is doing so well. Thank you for joining us for the live premiere every Friday night at 19.30. In episode five this past Friday, we got to know more about Nadine and Cornelius, and we loved every minute of it. What was your experience? Let us know. Last week on Bulletin Board, we shared with you how you can become involved on our channel. If you're interested in exploring the media field, here's an opportunity for you to volunteer in a number of different ways while you gain both insight and experience, while you have loads of fun. Thank you for the emails that have already come through. There's still space for you. So if you would like to volunteer in any of the roles you see here, 
please send an email to the email address you see on the screen. Well, this was a blast. That's all we have for you on this week's Bulletin Board. Be sure to join us again as we take another look at the Bulletin Board. Lisa Marie Smith, wishing you a great week ahead. Disney Bona next time.